Serpentor's Decepticons strike the Autobots, and Bumblebee falls in this video. What's up everyone, James here. Make sure to hit that like button. If you happen to be new, the link to the playlist of this series is right below the like button. So before we get into the video, I've been saying Serpentor instead of how it's actually pronounced in the G.I. Joe series, Serpentor. The reason why I've been saying it the way I have been saying it is because in this particular universe, the project behind his creation is called Serpent, and how we pronounce that is Serpent. So I found it hard to believe that all of a sudden, this advanced robot would say his name is Serpentor. That's my explanation, but to please my fellow G.I. Joe fans, I will say it like the show going forward. So, this opens up with Perceptor refusing to bring Colonel Hawk and the Joes to Cybertron because it would be too dangerous for them, especially if a full-scale war between the Transformers occurs. He wouldn't feel comfortable having their lives in his hands, especially when, because of their size, they don't pose that much of a threat to Transformers, which is true. Hawk responds that he and his team are going because they've been to Cybertron before and are well aware of the dangers. Also, since Serpentor is the result of the US government experimenting with Cybertronian tech, he feels it's his duty to stop him. Now, Dr. Lee and Professor Martin are the men behind the Serpentor project. I haven't mentioned them until now because they're not really essential to the story. They're helping mainframe salvage the gate Serpentor destroyed and used to transport himself to Cybertron. Martin mentions that Serpentor overrode all his failsafes. They weren't strong enough to keep Megatron's personality arrays they installed back. When Dr. Lee, the head of the project, mentions to Mainframe he is only helping the Joes to ensure Serpentor's safe return to him and that he's proud of how he operated, Mainframe straight up punches Lee right in the face. Because Lee is more concerned about Serpentor than the lives he has endangered, the destruction he's caused, and the chaos he is about to create. Moments later, Mainframe informs the team the gate has been salvaged, but he can only guarantee one jump until they've fully repaired it. Before the team makes the jump, Dr. Martin explains to them the full technical nature of Serpentor. He says Serpentor is an android engineered from mechanoid and humanoid components and is a highly adaptable soldier and assassin, a one-man army that can pass as a human while containing the offensive capabilities of a tank battalion. All his organs are synthetic, with backup mechanical systems, and his skin is a highly dense web of mechanoid cells impervious to conventional weaponry, and he is able to reform that skin into hyperdense coils. His brain is a supercomputer that is able to access instant information, downloaded with military strategies, war games, and leadership. Driving him is a personality derived from one of the deadliest, cruelest, most driven entities in the universe, Megatron. We named the Project Serpent after the snake that tempted Eve, because Megatron was like the apple of temptation. Mainframe tells the team he put out the call to all active and reserve Joe members, and when he gets the gate up and running again, he'll send as much backup as possible. The Autobots and Joes jump to Cybertron. They arrive in this junkyard, as Perceptor is putting in a call to Capital City for an army. Now, Capital City is basically Iacon, the capital of Cybertron, but in this universe, it's called Capital City. Suddenly, Scarlet hears something, and Perceptor picks up 12 to 20 movement signals. Hawk orders the team to get into a tight formation. What's funny is that Grimlock says, Tiny Fleshbag giving orders to Grimlock? Grimlock does not follow. And before he finishes his sentence, the team gets ambushed. They are attacked by these bots called cannibalizers. They're like the junk zombies of Junkion from the Autocracy trilogy. One thing I want to point out here is this cannibalizer we see here possesses Shockwave's arm. So this basically confirms that Shockwave didn't survive the explosion at the end of the last series. And who we can also safely assume didn't survive is Starscream since Cobra Commander planted the explosives within him. The team takes the fight to the cannibalizers, but they're surrounded by 20 of them. Bumblebee and Arcee decide the best course of action for the team is to escape. So they transform and begin to retreat, but they encounter even more cannibalizers in their way. Bumblebee jokes with Arcee that if he escapes first, she has to give him a kiss. However, out of nowhere, Bumblebee gets stomped on by Predaking. The team runs right into Serpentor and his Decepticons. Serpentor tells the Autobots and Joes they're outgunned and surrounded, and orders them to surrender. 
he wraps his metallic coils around the unconscious bumblebee and says, brave little soldier, always the first in. You're strong enough to survive such a cruel attack. Perhaps with medical attention, you could recover. Unfortunately, help isn't coming for Bumblebee. Serpentor crushes and electrocutes him, and Bumblebee falls right before the team's eyes. They're all shocked. Hawk gets pissed and tries to attack Serpentor, but he's easily stopped by him. And Serpentor says, he was a soldier standing in my way. Hawk replies, he wasn't just a soldier, he was a good man and friend. Serpentor orders the Decepticons to take the team prisoner. Meanwhile at Capital City, Perceptor and the team signals reached Optimus Prime, who was worried that the team is in the Gladiator Zone and that their signals abruptly stop. He initially decides to head there himself and find the team, but Hot Rod convinces him to stay and lead the peace celebration that's going on today. He tells him he'll gather a squad and find them. At the new Decepticons base, the Autobots are restrained and the Joes are imprisoned in the Decepticons ammo crates. What we see next is a tender moment between Scarlet and Snake Eyes. Now this is something that wasn't really built up or even hinted at in the last two volumes. It wasn't until the last video that we saw Snake Eyes has deep feelings for Scarlet because when he thought she was killed by Serpentor, he began to break down. What happens is they both, in their own way, admit their feelings for one another, since, as Scarlet points out, they could die here on Cybertron. Scarlet asks Snake Eyes to remove his mask and show his scars to her, and he does. They both come together and share a kiss. Sometime later, all the surviving Decepticons show up to this meeting. Dive Bomb tries to convince Hungar and the Terracons to join the new Decepticon army, but Hungar refuses. A fight almost takes place between the Predacons and Terracons, but Serpentor stops it. The Terracons don't take him seriously, thinking this is all a joke because of his size. At that moment, Serpentor wraps them all in his metallic tentacles and shows them he is the son of Megatron. He says that on this very day, the Autobots and Optimus Prime celebrate this new peace and prosperity. Why are we rotting here when we should be reigning in heaven? The Autobots are descendants of slaves, while the Decepticons hail from gladiators. So I ask you, my Decepticon brethren, shall we wallow in the mud, unable to unite, or shall we come together to conquer Cybertron and destroy the Autobots? The Decepticons chant destroy, and Serpentor now has every Decepticon under his rule. Sometime later at Capital City, Optimus Prime prepares for the peace celebration. Skids informs him that the Autobots patrolling the city haven't picked up any Decepticon signals, and Hot Rod hasn't found Perceptor and the rest of the Autobots. Suddenly, the Decepticons strike. They are massacring the crowd of Autobots attending the peace celebration. Optimus calls for security to transform and defend. Omega Supreme responds, Order acknowledged. No more Autobots shall fall while Omega Supreme stands. He blasted the Decepticons, taking some of them out. However, Serpentor was prepared, because all of the Decepticons' combiners, Menasaur, Piranicon, and Predaking, surround Omega Supreme. Predaking says, Omega shall stand no more. And Cybertron's almighty guardian falls. That is the end of the video, and the next one will be the confrontation between Serpentor and Optimus Prime. In the meantime, be sure to check out the Transformers Autocracy Trilogy right here, or check out the Energon Universe playlist. Other than that, have an awesome day, and always remember every day to go beyond. Hey, if you would like to join the upper echelons of the Beyonders, where you'll receive an array of member-only benefits, consider becoming a Beyonder Knight by becoming a YouTube channel member like Leah Drake, or by joining the Patreon like Patreon members Justin Heverly, Ray Dude, and Draglogia5. A massive thank you to you all for your support of the channel. It's greatly appreciated. Links in the pinned comment below if you would like to join them. Other than that, see you later, Beyonders.